Hello, hello, hello. So we're looking at look, um, graphing piecewise functions now. We've already talked about evaluating them and figuring out which equation to use and which um, put the value in that equation and then simplify it down and solve it and you're done. Uh, so now let's go and take a look at where we take those piecewise functions and graph them. Because graphing piecewise functions is one of those things that you will see on the final exam and be able to understand how to do it. So when we do that, there's something that we have to remember. Something you must remember. You are, since you are only graphing pieces of equations, the interval or condition will tell you when the equation will start and when it will stop. Remember, the interval is that part at the very end of each equation that has the inequality signs on it. Those are intervals, those conditions tell you when to start the equation and when to stop the equation. All, the equations never go on forever in both directions. They always start it somewhere and they either go on forever or they stop there. So at this point, that's what we're going to do. So when we are dealing with our piecewise functions and we're graphing them, we have to use tables. So to graph, we will use tables. And it should be a period right there. Let's put a period right there. And when we use the tables, we're going to use one table for each equation. One table for each equation. So there's three equations there. You do three tables. There's four equations, you do four tables. Okay. Now, just before we go into setting everything up, let's go take a look at some some other information. Some short, small. Here we go. So if, and this is like a for example type thing, not an example one or anything of that sort or example whatever. This is just as an example, for example, if the interval or condition is between negative one and five. So they give you the, the equation, let's say like two X plus five. And then they say like for um, negative one is less than X is less than five. At that point, you know, you're not going to graph the whole equation. The only thing you're going to graph is between negative one and five. So when we start doing with our tables and we're going to start doing with our graphing, that equation is graphed only when you have x equals negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Sorry. Now, some of you are like, well, Mr. Hall, you said before that we don't use we don't use like the end, we don't use negative one and five because it doesn't equal that. Now at this point, I'm going to tell you still put that in the table and I'm going to explain to you why we use the endpoints like that and what we do with those endpoints because there's something specific about that and it goes back to our whole graphing um, inequalities on a number line and the open and closed circles and all good stuff. It's going to come back to that. So with that, this is what we're going to look at for our table. Our x values are always here on the left side, and our f of x or y values are on the right side. So we're going to be substituting these x values because we said it's from negative 1 to 5. We're going to substitute those x into the x values, and then we're going to substitute those in. We're going to put those in as x values, and we're going to substitute those into the equation to find our y values. So we take these and we substitute them into our equation. <laughs> Bless me. Wow. My fault. And that's it. That's all we got to do. And again, for each equation that we have, we're going to do a table for it. So again, if there's five equations, we do five graphs, five tables. And then we go from there. And that's it. So let's go to example one now. 